I tell people the reason we're on this planet here is to help one another and not the government, one another. Here at Liberty and Finance, we're licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. We are standing by the inventory, ready to make sure you get what you need, even into the wee hours of night and on weekends, because preparedness doesn't stop. Call us, 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're always glad to have this returning guest. John Whitehead is the founder of the Rutherford Institute. He's a constitutional attorney. He's joining us this Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. John, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Hey, thanks for having me on, Danny, and thank you very much. You've written fairly extensively on many topics relating to constitutional rights and the overreach of government into our uh, private affairs. You stand up as a pro bono and low fee and otherwise advocate attorney for those who are being uh, suppressed, repressed uh, by by government overreach. And you've written also uh, fiction books about this as well. First in a series recently came out, The Battlefield of the Dead, uh, which uh, I read and enjoyed. Uh, we wanted to talk to you today about a very serious development in our own country, which is the formation of what many are dubbing the Ministry of Truth by the current administration, which has already established its objectives of cracking down on what they are calling disinformation in areas of real concern to people right now in our country, including immigration and election integrity, among others. So can you talk to us about what is this new branch of the government that's been established, what its stated purpose is, what you believe its true purpose is, and why the specific issues that it's reportedly going to be addressing are ones that we should all be very concerned about our freedoms uh, in those areas going forward? Well, it's called the Disinformation Governance Board which means that the government is now going to watch what we say and what we do and try to blanket it out and get rid of it. Or, by the way, they'll be going even stronger to the educational system to teach the younger generation that uh, they shouldn't think. And that's the key here is uh, why free speech is so important. And you're talking to someone who has been fighting this battle for 40 years. Public schools, I've been telling public school principals, don't erase everything. Have the students debate the issue. Uh, we had a case where a kid went into the school. This is a young guy, the teenager of the freshman in high school. He was wearing a Patriot T-shirt. It had a Patriot on it holding a rifle. And it was just this huge hubbub about guns and how evil guns were and stuff like that. Well, we argued the case in court. Like you said, we, do, we, don't, we don't charge when we do a case. It's pro bono. We get pro bono lawyers to help. Uh, we won the case because they locked him in a room that had a recruiting poster, and the Marine behind the kid was actually holding a rifle. The judge laughed out loud. We won our case. But I was trying to tell the principal there, debate the issue. Why can't he wear a T-shirt and expresses his beliefs? That's free speech. He's not carrying a gun. He's just showing someone carrying a gun. And they don't, you know, again, the key to free speech in this country and why the so-called founding fathers put it in the, the Constitution uh, is that it makes uh, people actually debate and think. Uh, how you get a populace to just become, oh, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, ha, I will do whatever you say, Heil Hitler, is you teach them not to think. And Hitler, well, by the way, I mentioned Hitler there. He was so enthralled when he first saw the big sporting events and people joining together. He went, ah, that works. Getting people in crowds and getting the chant the same words and putting the same hand up like that works. And to be honest with you, I see that's the direction this country is going. It's been going that way for many, many years, by the way. In fact, when I first saw it emerging really, really strong was in the older uh, George W. Bush administration. And as when Obama came in, the Department of Homeland Security started doing its threat assessments at that time, which we'll want to talk about. And a threat is anybody that says the wrong word, by the way. And you can be investigated. So... 
Uh, what the government wants, they want ultimate control now. They're in that mentality. Uh, many of the people running the government are so PC. Uh, the First Amendment to them is a dangerous thing. And again, that's the key here. Remember, if you know your history here, I tell people this. The original Constitution, a lot of the people in the country objected to it. They said, hey, this government could become a centralized monster if it's not controlled. So they came up with a Bill of Rights. And you have the First Amendment, which says we have free speech. The Second Amendment saying you have a right to protect yourself. A Third Amendment saying keep the government out of our homes and rushing in, which they do on a uh, annual basis now, 80,000 SWAT team uh, rushing into people's homes a year now, and people getting shot, dogs being killed, up to 500 dogs a day. I mean, this is stuff. And here's the other scary thing about all this. Is they all work together, by the way. The mainstream media doesn't report hardly any of this stuff. You, you very, hear, very seldom hear the mainstream media talking about the SWAT team raids or all the things we're talking about. They're just saying whatever the government wants them to say. And that goes back to the Carl Bernstein article that he wrote. Bernstein and Woodward, the two award-winning journalists who brought Nixon down, basically. When Carl Bernstein said he uh, passed, when he got past the Nixon case, he started working with uh, the big networks and stuff like that. He said, gee, they're interventing. <laughs> he wrote a really good article saying the government's interventing articles and stuff for the mainstream media. And they're still doing that today. You can't trust what you hear from the corporate media. And see, the thing is, the other thing we have to understand is the corporate state has merged now, uh, the corporations with the, the government. We have a corporate state. And just one small thing to show you how that works, the 17 intelligence agencies, their intelligence cloud is maintained by Microsoft, Amazon, Google, the big corporations work with them, maintaining all this information they take from us. And if we have time, we can go into how much they really take from us. Uh, and they have access to that. So you, we're in a thing today that George Orwell, by the way, he imagined what the future would look like, but but uh, not he did not foresee how deep it would go with the Internet, the global. Now we're moving into a global uh, internet state now that's everything. I mean, the NSA has their Five Eyes program located in five countries across the world, and they're completely got the globe uh, circled now, totally, and they're controlling everything uh, you see out there. So uh, we're facing a, 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 cr a major, major crisis in terms of people thinking. That's why programs like this are important why independent media is important, so that we can know exactly what's going on in our world. Otherwise, we're, you know, we're up against, um, I'm telling parents, teach your kids the Bill of Rights at home, teach them to think, teach them to object. We need rebels. What's a rebel? Someone who rebels against wrong things. And the government does not want that. That's why you have this disinformation society. But like, let's go back. The Way back under the Obama administration, the Department of Homeland Security started doing threat assessments of each home in America from green to red. Depending on what you had in your home or what you did or what you said or how you acted, where you were arrested, do you own a weapon? You have a red. And some people have said, why, why do the police show up at somebody's door so hype now? Because they have all this information that's available to them. They have their... Uh, Stingray devices, they pull up in front of your home, given to them by the Department of Homeland Security. They download all the information on your uh, phones, uh, your laptops. They keep it. They know exactly what you're doing. Everything's being watched now, folks, whether you believe it or not. I can prove it. I can document it. Go to our website at rutherford.org, read our articles. We just don't write an article. We write well-researched footnote articles so people can go to the footnotes and read the information. That's where we're at. Uh, and here's the thing that really bothers me uh, when I think about it, the more I've been working in this field is the people coming up today, growing up today, are not even going to know what's hit them. They're, they're not going to be able to listen. George Orwell's books banned in many schools, 1984. Uh, P-Kids don't read it. Um, trying to get them. I mentioned that book to children today. Have you ever heard of 1984 with George Orwell? They look at me and go, No. And you try to explain it to them. Uh, so we're in a very dangerous situation. What I'm saying is, uh, to me, it looks like the human race is being 
emaciated might be the word, as we move into the the whole artificial intelligence stuff that we're, we're seeing coming down the line, Google Singularity Program by 2029, they're saying by 2029, uh, the human mind is going to fuse with the internet and the computer systems and all that. Elon Musk is Neuralink, which will go into your prefrontal lobe. I'm going to see people, and they're calling it the metaverse now. I mean, the people are talking about uh, Facebook is meta. What is meta? It's total unreality. They're going to take you out of the world you're in now. But why do they want a metaverse? Why do they want all this stuff? And again, when you have people like Zuckerberg going into the White House and having dinner with the president and walking out, and they won't tell you what it is, what are they discussing, you know, that we shouldn't know? Uh, they want total control of the populace. They want to sell their products. They want your money. They want your money. They want your control. And uh, they don't want anybody that's going to speak back. That's why you have a First Amendment. That's why I keep emphasizing that. A couple of the stated objectives, specific topics of this new disinformation uh, department that's also been dubbed by people who have read 1984 as the Ministry of Truth, um, because it's trying to control and determine what is truth for people rather than letting people discover that and discuss that and, and come to that decision on their own, uh, is uh, including the immigration and election integrity. Can you take those maybe one at a time and uh, explain why it's so important to the government, but also to us as, as uh, citizens of the United States, to be able to uh, have integrity around our uh, immigration of our borders, also integrity around our elections and the ability to discuss it if there are concerns about either of those. It's any subject. So I'm saying they're, they're, they're labeling certain things that they're going to focus on, but I guarantee, and here's the key, this bit of a distraction, they're going to be focusing on anything that they the government disagrees with, anything. And that's a lot of things, folks. They don't want you saying, I'm Think your taxes are too high. Uh, your, you know, protect the borders. Your immigration stuff. Make sure the elections are free and all this and stuff like that. They don't want you saying anything negative about the government. If you read the book 1984, and I know you've been through it, and uh, many of your readers probably, I mean, listeners probably have too. Uh, the thing that there was is the government was making sure that people were totally controlled. Uh, he who controls the past controls the future. He who controls the future controls the present. That's a quote by George Orwell. And that's what this Ministry of Truth is all about. It wants to control anything that's happened in the past, anything in the future, so they can control the present. And it'll be any subject. Like I said, this started a long time ago. Most people don't get that. Way back under George W. Bush, it started eking out and um uh, Listen, there's a long history here, and I'm telling people, too, you have the FBI now showing up, talking to parents who are going to school board meetings and disagreeing with what's happening at a school board meeting and investigating them. How many people listening to this program remember very well much about the McCarthy era in the 1950s when Frank Sinatra wrote a short article, The Great Singer, Supporting a campaign some guy was doing, he was investigated by the FBI and put on the FBI checklist. Ernest Hemingway, you go down the list of all the great people that were watched simply because they were just disagreeing with what was happening at the time. And there's a long history of this, and I'm telling people, look back, There's and this is, may sound weird, Project Paperclip. If you've never heard of that, I would say research it. We, I've written about it on our website, rutherford.org. When the United States, right after World War II, brought in several thousand top Nazi officials who worked under Hitler and brought them into the United States government. They don't know where they went into the universities. They went into the government. Reinhold Gayhart actually was one of Hitler's key uh, security guys or spy guys in the surveillance that they did on, on the German people. He came in and helped set up the uh, NSA and CIA. So – People don't realize these are, these are all facts. I mean, when I wrote about this, I, my real good friend, Nat Hethoff, years ago said, you should get the Pulitzer Prize. I've never heard of this stuff. But it's all documented, by the way. But you're not going to hear about it in school or anything uh, or anywhere on the news. So there's been a lot of weird things in our past that we need to bring forth and teach our kids and study and uh, understand that 
we're not dealing with a government here that goes, oh, I really want to take care of you guys and you know make sure you have freedom and all that. They don't want freedom. They want you marching in lockstep buying their products now. And like I say, we have a corporate state that wants one thing, money, and they want to control how you think. And how do you do that? You stop free speech. You set forth your disinformation governance board, which, by the way, like I said, will will cover anything. Sooner or later, people are going to, hey, you're going to have some weird business at your door if you're out there getting too vocal. I mean, I've had former NSA agents visit me that have read my books and stuff, and they say it's worse than you think, John. They're watching everything, you know, and they're coming to get certain people. Why, why do you have these no-not raids and no-not visits now? I mean, you have a, a, a Second Amendment advocate up in Pennsylvania. Second Amendment advocate was shot through his window in his bedroom. He's asleep with his girlfriend, and they killed him. They just executed him a couple of years ago. Uh, we have a number of cases, by the way, where we've helped ex-veterans who have just emailed somebody about a subject matter that wasn't top secret, but they were either arrested or they uh, had one come to my office cry. This is a decorated Vietnam veteran. To, he just wrote a paragraph about some exercises they were running in America o- over the mountains, the military. Two NSA agents visited him the next day, armed with with weapons, and told him that if he ever did that again, they were coming to get him and arrest him, threatened him. This is happening, but see, there people are not talking about this. They become afraid to do that. So we're already seeing what was repeated back in the 1950s. And a lot of it comes out of just that really bad philosophy that was pushed into our government in the, in the late 1940s. And Again, go back and study it. Our website has a lot of this stuff in it. And my books actually mention it, by the way, like Battlefield America and books like that. Uh, they go into, go into more detail on the subject matter. But here's the key. People will say, how am I going to keep America free, man? Education precedes action. Get educated. And when I talk to people about this, they go, whoa, I didn't know all this stuff, man. Well, no, you don't know it because <laughs> they don't want you to know it. But it's there if you get educated. Take action. and I think we can change this country. We need more rebels. What's a rebel? A rebel is someone who just says, F the government, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And they'll stand up. And I've defended many of those people, by the way, who do that. And uh, I'm proud to be associated with those kind of people. Yeah, it gets back to what is the purpose, the very purpose for the creation of the government as established in the Declaration of Independence is to is to uh, secure our rights, our liberties. And uh, you've talked about that with us in the past about when the, you know, the government fears the people, that's a healthy society. When the people fear the government, that's an unhealthy society. And we've become the latter. The other thing about that preamble, the kids don't read it in schools anymore. A lot of schools just ban it. Because it says to this, if, you, if the government's not working like it should, we can toss it out. They don't like that. Uh, right. If, if, if governments become destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. And in order to do that, people need to talk with each other about grievances and come through that discussion, through that public discourse, that, that public square, be able to share ideas and realize I'm not the only one who has these thoughts and these feelings and come together in that way and that doesn't make you a, a uh, you know against uh, the the people it makes you for the people you're, you're trying to talk with the other people and uh, we've had everything twisted and turned upside down on us to so those of us who are wanting to try to stand up for liberty for free speech for the rights of the individual of, and protecting the needs of the family as the unit of a healthy society etc are uh, attempting to be uh, silenced deplatformed uh, shoved out of the and and made to disappear. The old saying used to be, if you see something, say something. More recently, it seems like if you see something, you better not say something or else. And uh, and yet, you're right. We have to we have to be courageous in the face of that tyranny and stand up and speak up uh, as we see fit for the good of our families, for the good of the truth, uh, for the good of our our beloved country. Um, there's another a news story that came out recently, and that is the 
Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who only a couple months ago shocked the world by freezing and seizing people's bank accounts who were contributing to a, a freedom rally, uh, now also came out just in the past week or so with a statement that they're going to expand their assisted suicide program to include people who are too poor to live with dignity. So now it's not just terminally ill, not just chronically mentally disabled and, and, and mentally ill. Now it's people who are poor. Uh, are being encouraged to kill themselves uh, by the Canadian government. That echoes something that has, was foretold in science fiction throughout the years, maybe most obviously in the movie Soylent Green, starring Charlton Heston uh, from, the, from the 60s, 70s. Um, but uh, this idea that you are expendable if you're not productive, if you're not useful to society, this was something that uh, Hitler had actually promoted in calling people useless eaters if they didn't contribute to society. It's part of the eugenics philosophy that resulted in uh, mass uh, genocides and that sort of thing. Can you talk to us in general principles about why it's important for us to stand up for the dignity and the right to life of each individual in the face of that kind of uh, tyranny? Well, we have a right to life, and uh, like I tell people, uh, in America, the Constitution starts with those three words. We, the people, do ordain and establish this government. We are the government, and we got to stop thinking that somebody else is the government. Supposedly, they're representing us, but useless leaders is a good word. I've seen it used so many times by these billionaires that are pushing eugenics. Uh, Henry Kissinger that rolled out of his mouth once. And uh, I'm hearing this by the idea of getting rid of people who are not so productive that we could, they're not worth anything. But here's the point. That's the how, I've been saying this to this interview, that's how the government views human beings. We are basically useless eaters unless we're supplying them with money and everything they want. And, um, that's the basis of government. We've lost our empathy, and this is the key. And it's not taught in the public schools. Uh, again, I tell people the reason we're on this planet here is to help one another. And not the government, one another, because we definitely need to defend one, one another. We need to have empathy and care for one another. We need to care for the poor. Uh, I, I'm telling churches, and being real honest with a lot of these church people, don't sit inside your churches and, he and hear hymns. Get out on the sidewalks. I mean, you can cure homelessness. You can cure homelessness in this country in a short time if they would get involved and have empathy and care for people. And who should be caring for the poor people? Uh, again, a lot of private organizations. If the government wants to do away with it, boy, there should be mass rallies against that principle there. That's saying that if you're not doing what we want you to do, you are worthless and we're going to get rid of you. You can just be erased. You're not important. But a lot of this is backtrack, and I'm just saying this. It's coming out of artificial intelligence. We're being run by robots now. And I'm telling people this. I'm warning you. I've, I've <laughs> read so much on this and studied it. AI, you read, robots have no idea what people are, basically, other than data. And we're data to the government now. We're data to Facebook, Google, and all those places. Do I think this is coming to America philosophically? Yeah, it's going to come to the world because the global state that we're moving into is going to push this idea that if you're not benefiting us primarily through your taxes and other stuff, and you become something we have to deal with, we're going to get rid of you because you're just useless data. You're useless junk. And again, we have great, with, with, uh, great dignity and worth as human beings. Let's not do away with that, folks. Let's preach it to our children and preach it everywhere we go, and let's care for one another. And that's the way to spoil the government. Just say, wait a second here. Don't be doing this. We'll take care of these people. We'll get our churches together and our uh, nonprofit groups and work to help them. And that's the way to cure this problem. Yeah, that's uh, you brought back two uh, strong thoughts to my mind. One is the great commandment is to go forth and as I have loved you, love each other. The other is that uh, late John Paul II uh, Pope said that the, the opposite of love is use. So to use another person uh, implies that, that they only have utility to you and that you have the right to sort of lord it over them and that your worth is somehow greater than theirs. So that even the concept, even the term useless eaters implies that in order to have 
worth. You have to have be useful to someone else to be used by them, which is a complete distortion of our intrinsic right, um, uh, dignity as human persons. Do unto others, you'd have them do unto you. I keep telling people this over and over. That's empathy. Uh, do you want to be treated like a piece of poop and thrown away you know, or flushed down the toilet? No. You don't feel it. So don't treat other people that way. I mean, I, I still run into people here and there, you know, that when I'm, I can tell by just the way they walk in the room, they think they're up above everybody else. They're not up above. I keep telling people, you're no better than the lowest person on the planet. If you think you are, you're just living in a fiction world, a very dangerous fiction world, and you'll be used uh, like an idiot. And the thing is, uh, again, do unto others, I'm do unto you, and let's care for one another. And we can change this planet if we could just get some of these principles into action and listen uh the average american watches 150 hours of screen devices a month i'm saying cut down these screen devices and get it to your local school boards your local city councils and get active in your local governments and change things get educated education precedes action and take action and change this world it's up to you folks and again there's a finger staring you in the face and that's whoever's going to be you know again if there's a judgment day and you're walking through the gate you know i hope you can make it through but and if there's not there's not but what i'm saying is maybe uh there's someone who's going to be looking at you going why didn't you do that why didn't you help someone down there today someone who needs your help and that's how we'll beat this thing is building each other up. Don't let the government, the government shouldn't be telling us we're useless. Uh, most of the time, the, most of the government I see doing things is useless. That's the point I'd make. Yeah, or worse. I mean, it's actually uh, stealing people's wealth, stealing people's freedom, stealing people's privacy, pitting people against each other, silencing people's ability to speak, to move, to gather together, to do all the things that are God given rights. And then there's the useless part, and that's being basically a parasite, uh, siphoning off uh, our life energy and our wealth and everything just to feed on itself. Because you said before, government is supposed to serve the people. It's supposed to be the servants of the people, but instead, it seems that it, it's not there for the good of the people. It's there for the good of itself, to preserve itself, to grow, to, to entrench and, and, and ensconce uh, its power structure going forward. And you've talked to us many times about the resources, educational resources that are available at Rutherford.org. Folks, highly recommend you look at that because there's a whole bunch of very useful, uh, quick uh, educational aids, pamphlets, that sort of thing that you can use to educate yourself, your family, if you're homeschooling or friends, uh, those you speak with, etc. cetera. Uh, John, if uh, people want to stay connected with your writing, where should they get connected? Go to Rutherford.org. It's Rutherford.org. Sign up to get our weekly uh, commentaries, newsletters. Uh, we had a lot of cases and put out press releases of some of the crazy things going on today and fight for truth. And again, uh, folks, uh, join us in the fight for truth and let's get this country turned around. We can do it, but you're going to have to get up off your butts and get active. I think we can take inspiration from some of the courageous mothers and fathers that we saw at these school board meetings around the country. Interestingly enough, they got labeled as domestic terrorists just for standing up for the extremists, for the innocence of children, for the, the appropriateness of not having children exposed to uh, you know, information at a too early of an age or not having uh, their privacy protected in their restrooms or their, or their school. Uh, you know, girls' sports programs protected, all these things that are so common sense. Uh, and there was a great opportunity for parents during these last couple of years of lockdowns and so on to see for the first time firsthand uh, what kind of so-called curriculum their students were being, their children were being exposed to, and now they're fighting back. And we need to take courage from that and bring it forward uh, as people who really do care about families and about the future of the next generations. Um, John, as always, we're speaking with John Whitehead, constitutional attorney and founder of Rutherford.org. On behalf of all of our viewers, thank you for joining us on Liberty and Finance. Thank you, sir. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we will let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. 
Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be double boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Elijah, my brother Kaiser, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.